just fixing my boat so that when we can finally go back to Canada, it doesn't fall apart. What's going on everybody? My name's Brian, you're watching Angling Anarchy. And uh, this video we have a little bit of a project uh, to try and tackle with the boat. This is a 2004 Crestliner Fishhawk 1750. I bought this boat brand new in 2004. I've done some work on it. I actually, a couple years ago, completely gutted the boat, um, recarpeted all the decking, uh, basically did everything that you could do to the boat except for replace the transom. So that's what this video is going to be about. The transom is getting soft and squishy, and uh, I guess I would expect that after 17 years. So the project that I'm going to try and document here as best I can is the process of getting everything off the back of the boat. We're gonna have to take the motor off, get that plywood. It's three pieces of 5 8 inch plywood sandwiched together. There's a trim piece that you can see I've already started working on that's sort of eh, right back there. Uh, it was welded at either corner. So I took a, where is that? This guy, I probably could have used a grinder, but uh, they were already a little bit cracked on that weld anyway. So this actually, uh, with a little bit of sawing, uh, I got a nice clean cut on, on those two pieces. Um, so we have those, we'll kind of walk around the back here. We have those detached from the corners here. Uh, from there, there's just a couple of screws that hold it in. Obviously, once we get the motor off, we can take this trim piece off. But I was able to you know, lift it up a little bit. You can kind of see in there. Let me flip this around for you. You're able to see those three pieces of uh, uh, plywood that they have sandwiched together. So yeah, check this out. This, this is the big problem right here. I shouldn't be able to get my finger underneath there. This piece, and you can see it right here a little bit, is that, that wood is so soft that that aluminum is getting pushed in. Um, yeah, it's not a good thing. So this has to come out. Um, it's going to be a long process. I'm going to, like I said, I want to try to document it as best I can and uh, let's see what we can do. Uh, this is the throttle control. There are two pins basically that this sits on. There's a little sort of lock pin uh, that I popped off. Uh, I don't know if you can kind of see those right here and right here. Uh, so pop the little pins out. There was a washer that we took out. I've got this one labeled, so I kind of know. Uh, it should be pretty easy though, because this fits back on this little bracket here. Uh, so we have this detached, so that's, uh, that's one piece done. All right, this little boot that everything goes through, I'm just going to take that out. All right, so we've got our gas line that we've got to get off as well. I, there's actually a little screw uh, on the Suzuki uh, that you can undo and it drains all the gas out of here. So uh, I'm hoping when I take this off, it shouldn't cause us a big problem. I'm... All right, just in case we get some gas flying around here. All right, I think we're good there. Couple more things to get out of here, it looks like. Um, boy, they do not make it easy to get in there, do they? Every motor is going to be a little bit different. You're definitely going to have those, uh, you know, your forward and reverse linkages. I mean, that, that should be pretty universal. Everything else that I took out, I mean, was just basically electrical harnesses that uh, snapped from each other. Uh, so that was that was actually that was pretty easy. It was just it was hard to kind of film and, and not get everything dirty. So suffice it to say, we have everything taken apart. Um, the steering linkage right here, if you can see that, there's this nut, and all you have to do. So basically, the what steers the motor goes through right here, and as long as you undo this right here, we'll go around to this side. This little guy right here 
So we've got this detached from this. This is just going to push through that way. Taking that nut off on the other side relieves the pressure and we can pull it out that way. But it's very uh, a stiff piece of metal, obviously. So we can't really bend it and get it out with the motor still on the boat. Once we get the motor lifted off the boat, we will pull that through and that is basically the last thing. One thing that I did uh, find interesting that I was, th that was the last thing that I was trying to uh, get unattached from the motor, if you will. Um, I'm gonna show you what it was. So what I just pointed at, I could not figure out for the life of me what that was. Turns out that runs all the way up to the speedometer and I was able to just unattach that hose from the back of the speedometer, fish it back through the boat and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's sitting on the ground over here. It's this big long thing. So, <sighs> motor ready to be lifted off of the boat. We can get a hoist on this pick point up top here. Um, we are going to run a bar across two of the trusses. Should be plenty to hold the weight of the motor. The motor is approximately 400 pounds. So uh, we are going to span that. I've got a couple buddies coming over uh, with an electric hoist, I believe they said. So we're going to hoist it up and hopefully let that motor hang out right here um, while we get the old board out. The other thing, so the steering, we have to kind of get it up and then move the motor that way. this way a little bit because it's so, you, there's no way to move oh, it. Oh, it's I've loose, it, it's just. I've got it turned as far as I can. Sure. But it's like, it's right here. Okay. So we've got about that much that we have to. Okay. Yeah, we'll make that work. Slide it out. Works for me. Okay, there it goes. That's good. There it goes. All right. Oops, no, right. just the top one, right? Yep. Which you put a little up or down pressure. Zero you were bringing it back in a little. Okay. There. Okay. Go up. Hi. Oh, there it is. There it is. She's off, folks. And oh my goodness, that goes a long ways. That's what she said. <laughs> oh, oh, all right. So now we there should go. push the boat forward. Okay. There's plenty of room. Oh yeah. Wow. Good mold. Should call like a lumber store over in like Lake Geneva. Yeah. Boating world. Yeah, that's that's good. And <laughs> by good, it's good. So now what do you gotta do to take the right, the this whole back panel? We've got uh, the hoist up there. Uh, put a blanket up there so it stays semi warm. There's a lot of cold air uh, coming down. It's uh, it is January in Wisconsin after all, so we try to keep the garage as warm as we can. But uh, yeah, here we are. Motors off. Check this out though. This uh, this is in bad shape. Especially on uh, on this side over here, you can really see how how bad it was pinched in. I mean, this stuff is just it's falling apart. So this was definitely a project that needed to uh, to happen, and it's happening so far so good. Uh, knock on rotten wood. Um, yeah. Next thing is we've got. Let's bend down here. You know, we obviously have uh, the. Uh, tie down hooks, uh, the U-bolts. There's a couple of big bolts that are uh, uh, you know, holding this back piece of aluminum to some of the inner structural workings of the boat. Uh, but uh, uh, I still have, I've got this drain tube out over here. This one, it's just a cover, you loosen it, pop it over and uh, crunch up. That's just a little aluminum tube. You can just use a uh, flathead screwdriver to kind of um, fold in one end, pull it out, not too hard.
But yeah, once we get all this out of here, we can start trying to get that piece of wood out. All right, well, I've skipped ahead and done a bunch of stuff and didn't film it because I didn't think it would be all that interesting, but I'm going to go over what I did. So all these holes, you can see there were 17 of these. They were hex head bolts that went through um, pretty easy to get at them on the other side. Uh, and they all they all came out. They actually just uh, turned out pretty easy. Uh, what I did with those though, because they were all similar, so you'd think they would all be the same. They were different sizes. So what I did, I made up a little map. If you can see that, I made up a little map and numbered each one. And then as I took them out, I just put a little piece of tape. So this corresponds to number three on that little map that I drew on the back here. Um, I made some notes, you know, some were bent that I need to replace, one needs a washer. So uh, that is a good piece of information to have. Keep track of that. I mean, other than that, getting those bolts out and then uh, these guys right here, um, they were a little bit tougher. I'm gonna flip the camera around here so you can kind of see, but I had to take the this whole back deck off and move it but uh, there was quite a bit of foam um, that I had to get rid of if you can kind of see in there so there was a little bit of foam I had to cut out we'll just kind of shove that back in there uh, to get at the uh, the u-bolts but everything from here on out uh, it's now the problem is going to be getting the piece of uh, the three pieces of wood out actually and I did I bought some big uh, lag screws they're uh, 10 inch I believe these guys right here so hopefully there's enough good wood for those to grab onto I'd like to get it out in one piece but uh, as we said before I can literally shove my finger into this this wood here it is it's toast this stuff here is decent this stuff's okay I don't know if I can't get it out in one piece it's definitely soft enough we can just start pulling chunks out but uh, that is the point we're at now we've got all the bolts out the piece of wood should be free so next step is to get the dumb thing out of there no promises this is gonna work uh, or that this won't pull the shelf over but it's the best I have right now so let's give it a shot All right, I got this side to move. I'm starting to wonder if I missed a screw over here because this side's not moving. This side's starting to slide out though. That's good. Well, there's obviously, there's got to be like one screw holding this side in because this is, as you can see, that is starting to come out pretty nicely. It's starting to tilt somewhere in that area. So I'm going to have to do a little bit more looking around to see if I can find out what's keeping us from pulling up this side. We have lift off on that side. We don't on this side but i could see there was a point where on one side it was going up and on the other side it was being pulled down so i knew that somewhere right in this area there had to be something holding it in place i couldn't see it standing in the boat but my lovely wife came out to see how things were going and she could see back and behind this piece right here that there is one more screw i think once we get rid of that screw this thing's gonna pop right out all right so I opted for the grinder. It's not the uh, the nicest uh, job, but I uh, it's probably hard to see. But uh, lopped that corner off there, got the screw out. So time to see if we can lift again and hopefully don't uh, collapse the shelves. 
we'll see what happens. <laughs> Get the idea i'm gonna get this thing out here and i'll show you what it looks like after it's all out boys and girls ladies and gentlemen uh i did it uh i was freaking out a little bit there uh when i wasn't able to get this side out but as i said we found that screw i could start to hear the shelving unit uh, this is probably not the best thing to use but it's uh it's what i had and i was kind of keeping a real close eye on uh hopefully not putting too much weight on it as i pulled this out it was starting to creak a little bit but uh, man, once we got everything free and clear, she lifted right up out of there. We have a beautiful, well, maybe not beautiful, but we have a template. I was shocked this stayed in one piece. I thought as soft as that wood was, I thought it was gonna fall right apart on us. So I am beyond thrilled that this is all in one piece. Um, yeah, this is exciting. Now we just have to wait for the, uh, for the other pieces of wood to show up. That's a, a couple, couple few days away here. After a few days of not working on this, we're ready to get back at it. Uh, as you can see in the uh, background over there, our plywood came in, so that's exciting. So we'll get to that part. We're gonna get to cutting that, uh, gluing those together. We've gotta get three layers thick of 5 8 inch plywood to recreate what the original transom was. So we'll get to that. But first, I just wanted to address, there was uh, some issues right here and here where the motor bolts went through the uh, the aluminum it was pulled in pretty hard because of how soft the transom got i mean this was was bumped in probably a good half inch three quarters of an inch and i'm going to attempt to show you how i was able to straighten this back out and get it back to relatively flush so that when we drop the new transom in there um, we have as straight a piece of aluminum on either side of it as we can. All right, so here's what I was able to do to pull the metal back out so it was relatively flush. There's still a little bit of a bump there, but it's a lot better than it was before. Uh, stainless steel bolt, nut, a couple of washers. Um, go through it there. Drill the hole in just a piece of board that was lying around okay get it relatively tight so now I've got a way to push forward and pull back to help to pull the metal out that way and the other thing I did get a couple pieces of wood that sort of fit in there that gives you something to work against otherwise this is just gonna flex um, so just kind of putting my body up against it, I was able to push this way and I felt it bump out, push from the top and also felt the top part bump out. So, um, I don't know if that's the right way to do it, but that's the best I could come up with. I did it here and here cause they were both sunk in just a little bit. So that's how I fixed, well, sort of fixed that problem anyway. Onto the cutting of the plywood. We have, let's see, get down here two four by eight sheets of five eighths inch plywood the original transom is three sheets of five eighths so cut it in half we'll take one from over here we'll be left with a little bit of plywood but that doesn't hurt to have that laying around the garage i can always use that in a different project probably um, so this is our old transom this is 22 by 74 and a half so uh, we'll have plenty of room on a two by eight foot uh, sheet to put this on, trace it, and start getting along here on our new transom. Once we get it, well, we have to glue it together first. We'll, we'll go over that as well, uh, how we're gonna do that. So let's just get this thing cut right now.
We've moved the operation from my ridiculously messy garage to my ridiculously messy basement just because it's a little bit warmer. It's nicer to work down here and this stuff will probably cure a little bit better in the warmth of uh, being inside rather than in the, in the uh, garage. But I've got my three sheets of wood. I actually trimmed it down to 74 and 5 eighths in length because that is the exact length of the transom up there. So uh, just a little bit less to work with, a little bit less gluing that we'll have to do if we would left them in long sheets. So that's where we're at. I'm going to use Gorilla Heavy Duty Construction Adhesive. I was going to just use a wood glue, but a construction buddy of mine said this stuff uh, isn't going anywhere. 100% waterproof. A lot, some of the wood glues that said, I mean, they just said water resistant. So waterproof, we're going to do that. I'm just going to be spreading it on. Um, try to thin it out a little bit. I'll use a little one of these putty knives, taping knives, just a cheap plastic one to spread out the glue a little bit. I've got my clamps all ready to go. So that's the next step. Let's get these suckers glued together. Well friends, here's the scoop. Here's where we're at with our transom rebuild. Um, the motor's still there. Uh, we have the piece of wood right there, all ready to go. All we have to do is put that onto that, trace it, and then cut it out. I did put a couple coats of the urethane on here just because that is still nasty and wet and yucky. So I didn't want any of that to transfer to the brand new wood. So I've got that protected. So when we lay that on there, we don't have to worry about any transference of nastiness. We'll trace it out. We'll get that cut. We'll get it sealed up. That'll be easy. Uh, over here on the boat side of things, let's see what we can do here. There was a large crack right here. All the pressure that the engine was putting on this had cracked that weld. As you can see now, it's re-welded. So we're good there. Um, we have this channel basically that the transom sits in. Uh, I've done my best to anywhere where the metal was bowed in or pushed out, I've straightened it up as best I can. Um, so yeah, let's cut a transom out. been a couple days since I filmed anything because quite honestly what I was working on is not going to be fun to watch. I was putting four or five coats of a spar marine grade varnish on the new transom which we have. Ah, let's get we got it sitting down here. Gluing it together with that Gorilla Glue all-purpose adhesive worked out really good. It's nice and solid. It's coated all the way around uh, so it should be completely waterproof and I think we're ready to drop this thing in to its new home. Um, I went through, pretty sure I already talked about this, but I went through and any of these holes where the metal was pushed into this cavity that the transom is going to be, I did that little trick with the piece of wood and the screw and tried to bump the uh, aluminum out. Um, if you do it a little bit too far, not a problem. It should push it right back in once we get everything tightened up here. Uh, one thing I did do, and let me take the camera and kind of get a low shot here. 
put this hole right here is that hole right there. So what I did is I drew some lines straight down so as we're dropping that piece of wood down, we'll be able to use those lines and see the, those lines through this hole and hopefully keep everything going straight down. I think I'm gonna grab some help from my neighbor uh, to help me lower this in. But once it's lowered in, the only thing that's left to do is drill holes through. I'm not gonna drill holes preemptively. I could use the old transom, but man, if you're off by even a little bit, I'd rather get the wood set in there and try to drill through from one side to the other. Uh, just take our time, try to get nice and straight. Let's see what happens here. Good on your side too. It's shifted a little bit. But... So that I should be able to still see the lines. So we maybe have to come. Yeah. Oh, too much. Too much. Need some more weight over there. Have to start tapping it in a little. Kind of. No, kind of like that, yeah. Tap it this way a little bit. Well, I'd say that went about as good as I could expect. Um, might be hard to see, but uh, you can see the hole right here. I don't know if you can see. I uh, traced a circle where this should line up. This one's about spot on. This one's just a touch low. Uh, there's a little bit of a gap over here. I don't think it's gonna make a difference. All the weight bearing is obviously in the center. This is nice and flush. This being, you know, maybe an eighth inch too low, I don't think it's gonna make a difference. We're still gonna get all the structural integrity that we need. Uh, now we just have to go through, redrill all the holes, get all the bolts through, uh, see the light at the end of the tunnel, I think. Uh, and then it's just a matter of getting the motor back on. Let's get to drilling some holes and uh, get this thing anchored in place. I'm starting in the middle. I'm gonna work my way out as far as repunching these holes. There's 17 of these screws. I've been using just 100% silicone, um, waterproof, and giving a good amount of uh, squirt into the hole here, getting the, the bolt in, uh, making sure there's enough left that when this seats up against the aluminum that there is a nice seal that it makes. There are four large bolts, obviously for the motor. We'll uh, you know get to that once we're getting the motor on. And then we've got our two holes for the, uh, the drain tubes. I've got the drain tubes, I've got the little tool that uh, rounds over the uh, cut edge for these, so uh, we'll be doing that. But uh, from here on out, I'm gonna get these bolts in here and uh, I'll see you when we get back to uh, probably doing these things, I'm guessing. The hard part about this is on the other side of the wood from this, you gotta hit a hole. <laughs> so when you're drilling, what I was doing was using uh, a little square here, putting it up against uh, the back of the boat, just trying to make sure I was as square as possible, get it lined up. For the most part, I was hitting the other side, no problemo. Uh, we got the tie-down hooks back in, 
Uh, we've got most of these, the 17 bolts. There's a couple few that are missing just because they were bent. I'm gonna have to replace those, but for the most part, this is nice and solid right now. Um, up here, as you can see, there is a little bit of a gap here. It's nice and flush right here. As we come up here, there is a little bit of a gap. That was like that uh, with the old transom. Um, I'm not too awful worried about it, quite honestly. I'm going to run uh, a bead of silicone on either side of this. When we put the cap on, I'll run a bead in the corner of each side, so this should stay nice and dry, uh, or at least better than it was before. Certainly better than it was before. Um, regardless of, of what happens, this is this piece of wood is way better than what was in here previously and should last just as long, if not longer. So, um, yeah, drilling the holes. Uh, don't go easy on the silicone. Just fill up the hole good. I was putting it down the, uh, the length of the bolt, spinning it in. The last thing that we have to do, other than the motor, I do have the holes drilled uh, for the four bolts for the motor, so we've got that ready. But we did this. I just did this one. I'm about to do that one. Um, what I did, since this is a little bit tougher, I suppose if you have a one inch bit, it wouldn't be too bad, but I don't. I just have a uh, one of the uh, kind of the wood hole bits. Where'd that go? Right here. One of these guys. Uh, my thought was uh, if I don't hit that perfect, I'm screwed because it would catch on the other side and not be good. So what I did is I drilled through, I actually, let's get back down here. I measured to find the exact center of this. Started going in with the, uh, the bit, used the square to make sure I was going in at a 90 degree angle from here. And then once it popped out on the other side a little bit, I just made sure that it popped out on the other side right in the center. If not, I was uh, kind of massaging it one direction or the other. Um, and, and actually, once, once I popped through on the other side, I was able to come at it from the other side and just drill through back this way. And it looks like we have a nice, perfect one inch hole. I'm going to do the other one and then we will get our drain tubes in here. There's a little tool that you have to use that will crimp, uh, the one side's already crimped and then it'll crimp the other side for us. So that's the next step. Um, once we get that done, we're so close to being done. It's exciting. All right, I'm gonna show you how I got this drain tube, which is three inches. I needed to get it to two and a quarter to put it in here and have it be the right size. So I'll show you how I did that. All right, first thing I did was I made a couple of marks around this. And then, uh, super sophisticated here, took a seven eighths inch wood bit and uh, put a little padding on it so that it holds it relatively straight, spins pretty straight. Uh, that way I have spun just about all the way around, it missed a little spot, but I've spun a line all the way around that I can follow when I cut this. Next, I drilled a one inch hole in just an old scrap piece of two by four. Uh, this is what is gonna hold this for me. I'm actually gonna clamp it down to the this is such a mess in here. I'm going to clamp it down to the corner of the very messy work table over here. That way I can use the hacksaw, follow that line, and get a relatively straight cut. It's probably not going to be perfect, but it is good enough for what we are going to do. If you have a better way of doing this, which I'm sure there is, go ahead and do it. That's how I'm doing it. All right, here's a little tool that we're going to use to seat this thing. This guy right here. So, well here, let me put it on here so you can actually see what we're what we're doing just like that now what we do is just crank it together and since we have these little slope sides here it's just going to squish it together and uh, should catch both both pieces of metal on either side of the wood here and we'll have both of our drain tubes set all right folks i think today's the day we uh, finish this project up yeah, last time we talked, I was getting all the, let's dip down here, getting all these bolts back in. Uh, we got the, uh, the drain tubes put back in. That was a pretty easy process, actually. I'll try to put a link for that little tool that I used to uh, crimp over the ends uh, down in the uh, description below. But uh, the only thing I'm missing, I've got two bolts that I need to replace. Um, I've got them far enough off to the side that I'm really not concerned about. Uh, I think we're going to put the motor on. I can easily access these from inside. We need to get this cap on. Um, and 
I've got a little bit of silicone on top of this uh, just to keep water from sitting on top of the wood. Uh, we are going to flip this guy over and then the channel on either side, I'm gonna run a bead of that silicone so that when we snap it back on here, that will also keep water from getting up and into it. Um, there's a couple spots where just from years of stress, you know, we've got some spots here that are uh, where the aluminum is not flush up against the new transom. So as we get this piece on here, we'll use some clamps over here to clamp it down, get this seated. There's a couple screws that hold it in. And then at the corners here, if you remember, we had to cut that weld. So uh, the same guy, uh, gentleman that did the weld for me on the uh, engine support that we looked at earlier, he is going to, that'll be the last thing we do is tack this little trim piece back on at the corners. So, all right, uh, that went fairly well, I think. We've got her seated back down uh, pretty nice. Uh, sealed up all the uh, screws that went back in with some silicone. So we should have it more waterproof than it was out of the factory, I'm assuming, uh, and a better protected transom. Uh, next course of action is to uh, wait for some buddies to come up. Got to drop the motor back on, get the bolts all in, get that all siliconed as well. Make sure you guys, when you're, especially on the back side where the water is obviously has a chance to infiltrate, um, get everything sealed up as best you can. Use extras, you can always wipe away the extra and uh, just get everything sealed up. Uh, we we wanna protect this new one as best we can. So uh, with that, uh, next thing you'll be seeing is us putting the motor on, I believe. One. I was pretty much waiting for my garage to collapse. <laughs> it didn't uh, comically fall off when we uh, took it off of the hoist that we had it on, so that's a good start. Uh, we got all four bolts in. Uh, did the same thing with those guys, just glopped all sorts of silicone on there. Uh, better to have more than not enough just to seal this thing back up. So we will. Get the steering linkage hooked back up here. That's pretty straightforward. The wiring harnesses uh, hook the gas back up. Uh, we'll try to do that a little bit better this time around. Um, from there, get it all hooked back up and fire it up and make sure it works. And we are nearing the end of this project. All right, this is pretty straightforward. Got the nut on here. Be good if I went the right way. There we go. Perfect. We'll tighten that up and we're ready to go with that. All right. Well, let's start with the easy one here. We'll Get the gas line connected back up. Might need a pair of pliers to get. There we go. Nice and snug. All right. A couple harnesses and then these two little guys. The trick is going to be getting them put back together in such a way that uh, this little boot that was fit around everything uh, still fits in right here. So we'll see what we can do about that. Okay, got that one.
Okay, all the electrical stuff is hooked up now to get the throttle hooked back up here. If I remember right, just... There we go. That's not too bad. is on there now we just have to get these go on these little spindles and they've got some little keys on here that we'll have to pop out slide these back over and uh, yeah we'll be all done with this part of it <laughs> got it all right let's test it real quick There we go. She's working. Also, and I almost skipped over it, but uh, when you're redoing the uh, steering linkage, make sure you tighten that back up too. I almost forgot to mention that when we hooked up the other side. So yeah, hook up the other side, then tighten that nut up right here, and you're all set with the steering linkage. Well, that just about wraps it up. Let's do one quick test. Um, the motor is still not completely put back together, but all the essentials, all the electronics are hooked up, the gas is back hooked up. Um, we just need to put the panels back on, so you guys don't need to see that, that's not exciting. But, let's make sure this fires up. That's good. Taking the motor off and detaching everything was the part about this project that really freaked me out. So to have that thing fire up makes me very happy. This was a really fun project. It is not easy by any stretch of the imagination, but um, it's not bad either. You just have to take your time and uh, don't rush anything. Uh, make sure, you know, take notes about when you're taking things apart, how they go back together. So, you know, a week or two later, you're not scrambling to figure out what's going on with it. So. Um, that's my best advice here, folks. Uh, I just have to put the motor back together a little bit, but the transom itself is its holding up good. Uh, we'll see how it goes this season. But uh, yeah, that was a good one. That's, that's a fun project, actually. And if that project, if I would have taken it to a marina, you're probably staring down the barrel of $3,500 to $4,000. Uh, I haven't added everything up yet, but I probably spent three three hundred fifty dollars on all the materials for it you know plus your time but um a cool project and that's it uh thank you everyone for watching if you have any questions about anything i did that maybe i didn't cover that well uh hit me up in the comments below and with that folks we're all done thanks for watching i appreciate every single one of you thank you so much and i'll see you on the next video